And I like procedural stuff like this because what I can do now is I can apply this to any other object. For example, if I hold down shift and grab all these and I hit control G, I can name this painted steel. I can right click this and say create a smart material. Now I have a painted steel smart material here. And I can just drag this uh, onto anything. I can drag it onto my teeth. Or I can select my teeth mat, I guess, and I can drag my painted steel on here. And now my teeth have uh, painted steel. Now one thing I am going to have to do that's not, it's procedural, but it's going to kind of throw throw this off a little bit, is if I click on this mask here, you're going to see this paint selection, or this color selection here, is going to blue. Uh, so I can go ahead and uh, get rid of this uh, select by color, and also get rid of that paint, because that's what we did to clean that up. So I'm going to invert this mask so that it's white. Now you can see uh, it's just painted metal. And since we're not using that color selection anymore, uh, this is all one material ID. It's probably a bad example. <laughs> I should have dragged it onto um, the eyeballs probably. Uh, but we'll go ahead and talk about this. So we go, uh, we can change this to normal now, and now it'll behave like you expect. Uh, and then this metal edge where we can just go ahead and invert that. Um, so like I said before, oh, actually, that's a, that's a good point. So I made a painted steel smart material. So if I go up here and I go to the eyes, and I drag that painted steel on here, and then I go down here, and I say, you know what, let's change this color selection from blue to green. I just want that painted steel on this part of the eyeball. There you go, it works great. And you know what, I can still go in here and say metal edge wear, let's dial that at wear level up uh, quite a bit, perfect. So that, that makes a little bit more sense. The only bad thing about that is if I hold down control, sh control alt and right click the face here, and I'm like, you know what, I don't like that color anymore. So I'm gonna go back to my base color so I know which where, where to get it, there's my color. Um, I want it to really be more of a yellow orange or highlighter yellow, I should say. Uh, and then I have to go back and change it to that color for all of my uh, other things. So instead of doing that, what I can do, I'm going to go to teeth mat. And I'm going to just delete that. I'm going to go to eyes mat, and delete that out of there. And all I need to do is go to my skull mat, right click this painted steel, say in, instantiate across texture sets. And I'm going to put that right onto my eyes and teeth, hit OK, and you can see uh, that's going to put an instance across here. Now, like I said before, I had to go through, since I had a color selection built into this um, smart material, really bad example. Let me show you something that's a little bit uh, better. Let's go ahead and get rid of that painted steel off of here. And I'm actually going to interject this, uh, I'm going to sneak this in here. Uh, one other thing you can do is you can take a smart material and you can just drag it onto the component that you want. So instead of going through here and selecting, you can just like drag it onto the eyeball or onto the skull or anything like that. So I'm going to take painted steel, and we're going to drag it right onto that skull. And I'm kind of glad this happened because this is a good time to talk about uh, making procedural solutions versus making things that you have to go in and hand paint or things that are a little bit destructive to proceduralism, which is something like a color selection. So we have a color selection here, and it's only going to work on vert colors that are blue, which is fine, but it's kind of better to let the user decide uh, that so we don't run into what we just did, which is like, hey, I'm going to drag on the smart material and nothing works when I instantiate it. So just for general usability, having a, a paint layer, uh, again, if you have to go in and like manually modify things with a paint layer, probably not that useful to hand off to somebody else to use it as something general. So I'll go ahead and get rid of those. Color selection, again, isn't really all that helpful. And then now that we got rid of the color selection, you're gonna see, uh, because the metal edge wear was set to multiply, it's basically multiplying metal edge wear against black, which is just making it all black. So I'm gonna take this and put that back to normal. So at least we get that metal edge wear back. So now this is a better general purpose use material, smart material. It's basically steel, or painted steel, uh, that's got a little bit of wear on the edges that's worn out. Uh, so you can put this on, or you can apply this to any other uh, asset and it should be fine. So I'm going to right click this. First let's go in here. I'm going to right click painted steel down here. I'm going to say delete. And then I'm going to go back up here and then we can say create smart material. So now we got a new painted steel. So I'm going to go up here. We talked earlier about like opening a sample. So we can go in here to open a sample. We can go ahead and discard these changes here. The tiling material is the one I was talking about earlier where you just have a plane in here. If you don't care too much about, if you click on the shader settings and go down here, there's the displacement tessellation that's gonna allow this to displace your geometry. If you just wanna drag in a material, you can go ahead and just get rid of all this, just select it and delete it. And then like we were looking at earlier, if we go over here to materials and we drag that sienna marble on there, now you can get a tiling look at that material on there. Uh, but if you want to play around with a little bit more edge wear type things, you can go in here to File, Open Sample, and we'll use this Meat Mat. 
And occasionally Substance uh, Allegrythmic will have contests on like how to texture this guy up and play around with the new tools to get something neat going. But essentially you see we have head, body, and base for your texture set. So I can go back into our smart materials here, scroll down to Painted Steel. So here's our new Painted Steel that we made. And again, I can just drag it right onto the part that I want. So we'll just drag it onto the head here. And look at that, we've got a nice Painted Steel. However, if I take this Painted Steel and I drag it onto the body, now we have two versions of painted steel. It looks fine, but if I go back, or if I take this body, I'm like, oh, you know what? I wish this was a different color. You can select that color, scroll down, change this from like a blue to maybe a green. And then you gotta go, okay, well, what is this uh, hue? Okay, there's my RGB values. I'm gonna go and plug that in. I'm gonna go back to the head and then change this color. It's kind of a mess. So instead of doing all that, I'm gonna go back to the body here. I'm gonna take this painted steel and delete it. Go back to this head, right click this painted steel and say instantiate across texture sets across texture sets uh, or control shift D and then we're gonna say I want it on the uh, body I don't want it on the base so I'll go ahead and uncheck that we'll hit OK and then now if I go to the body you're gonna see if I click this little button here it's instantiated it's saying hey the parent here is the head so if you want to make any changes to the body painted steel you got to go to the head so click on the head that'll take you to the head texture set and then now you can go in here change the color to whatever you want and it'll update across both sets and of course for that base, we can go back to the materials, drag that sienna marble on there, and there we go.